me. And today, let's watch this video together. Thank you. Game exchange, culture shock. Hey everyone, Gaijin Kumba here. Hi, Gaijin Kumba. I live right by the Fushimi Inari Shrine. I've had a relation with this shrine since I was a child. Oh? Star Fox is based off of the Japanese culture that inspired me. Oh my god, Star Fox! I love this man so freaking much. Not only have his games been great for decades now, but he's a master at incorporating really subtle cultural references in all of his games, with Star Fox being no exception. And with the coming of Star Fox Zero, Mr. Miyamoto revealed quite a bit of both backstory and inspiration behind the Star Fox franchise. And I love this man to death for doing such, but it really got me wondering if he really told us everything. After watching his interview, I wasn't convinced that that's all that there was. Ooh. Having covered Star Fox once before, I began digging through all of my old notes as well as researching everything I could about any correlation between the culture that Mr. Miyamoto grew up in and the classic he helped create. The culture and I found classic. a lot. Like a whole lot. But for this video though, I want to talk about the characters of Star Fox, since that was a point Miyamoto talked about several times in his interview. And mm. good lord there's a lot here. Now, as far as Star Fox himself goes, I think I wrapped up his Kitsune inspiration quite nicely in a past Culture Shock episode. So if you're mm. curious about his cultural inspiration, go check that out. As for Falco though, his inspirations Falco. are actually more animal based than cultural. Presumably, he's based off the red-throated Karakara, a highly oh. territorial, obnoxiously loud, and generally really aggressive bird. And boy, don't that sound familiar. Hey, Ooh. Einstein, I'm on your side! But... <laughs> Is that... Hey, Einstein, I'm on your side! Come on! <laughs> Slippy and Peppy have a very unique connection to the first Japanese Ooh. comics ever made. Oh. The Choju Jim Butsugiga, or Scrolls of Frolicking Animals. Scrolls of Frolicking Animals. Created in the 12th century, these four stylized scrolls told stories of anthropomorphic rabbits, frogs, monkeys, and other animals with simplistic but stylized images. Wow, those are amazing works from the 12th century. Wow, that is nearly a millennium. And to call these scrolls well known in Japan would. Rana is already in the 21st century, in the year 2021. Would be a massive understatement. As previously stated, the Scrolls of Frolicking Animals are believed to be the first manga ever created in the country, and we all know how much of a big deal manga is over there. In fact, these visual stories are so well known that this year, 2016, Studio Ghibli made a uh, so this video came out five years ago. Specialized 30 second commercial highlighting the soothing style and feel of these beloved comics, which are now housed in the Tokyo and Kyoto National Museums as a national treasure. Wow. With rabbits and frogs being such huge characters in these beloved comics, perhaps the design choices of Slippy and Peppy aren't as generic or random as some might think. Hmm. But note I said monkeys were included in the cast of characters of the scrolls. Sometimes they were depicted as monks of high level officers, but they were more often than not depicted in the scrolls as being thieves and troublemakers. <laughs> Which brings up a question I hear a lot of people ask me about this franchise. Why are monkeys and apes the bad guys in Star Fox? Huh. Because, dear theorists, Monkeys are assholes. Sure, we may find them to be funny or intriguing over here, but overseas, monkeys suck. For the longest time, they've been pests that would destroy crops, damage structures, and harass livestock. And from the 13th century onward, monkeys became the metaphor for tricksters, thieves, and other negative aspects of human nature. Well, in comparison, just show, uh, just use your foot in front of a monkey, and let's see if a monkey will actually take it away. Wanna try it? Hmm. Examples being the aforementioned Scrolls of Frolicking Animals to children's tales like the Battle of Crab and Monkey. In wow. that story, said crab got a raw deal from a monkey trading his rice ball for a persimmon seed. But the crab took care of the seed which grew into a huge fruit bearing tree. Now the monkey offered to climb up and get the ripe fruit for the crab, but instead he kept all the ripe fruit for himself and pummeled the crab with hard unripe persimmons to near death. The crab oh. got his revenge though with his friends bee, mortar, chestnut, and cow turd. Did I mention Japanese folk stories can get really, really weird? <laughs> and long story short, they pulled a the Rube Goldberg machine and sent the monkey scurrying away never to return. So what did we learn from this? Monkeys are assholes and don't fuck with crabs. <laughs> and that story pales in wow. comparison to the jerkish behavior of monkeys. Want to hear how bad it gets? Check out the tale of Shippe Taro, 
The story tells of a monkey and their leader, a yokai baboon called a hihi, posing as a god <laughs> and tricking the local village to sacrifice a maiden to them every single year. What? Through the aid of a priest and a massive dog named Shipetaro, the demon baboon was slain and the monkeys were driven away. So yeah, screw monkeys. And that's why Andros, Andrew, and so many other villains in Star Fox are monkeys. And this actually segues into another well-known Star Fox character, General Pepper, and while we're at it, just the whole Cornarian fleet. Because they're all dogs. General <laughs> Pepper, Bill, and pretty much everyone else in the Cornarian fleet. Wow, wow. But even this ongoing theme has reason. Unlike monkeys, dogs within Japanese folklore are depicted as being noble, good, and staunch protectors. Mm -hmm. In fact, during Edo times, Shogun Tokugawa Tsuneyoshi ordered extreme protection regulations for dogs in Japan, which earned him the nickname the Inu Shogun. From Inu stories Shogun. like Shippe Taro to the ever-faithful Hachiko, it's completely reasonable and logical for the quote, good guys in Star Fox to be dogs, if Japanese culture really led Miyamoto's hand. Ooh, what a mouthful. And Human's best friend. I've only talked about the characters too, there's so much more to be explored in the Star Fox franchise, but sadly that'll have to wait for another day. But in case you missed it, click here to check out the cultural origins of Fox McCloud in that culture shock I mentioned earlier, or click here to check out the inspiration behind Mario 3's most well-hidden bonus stage over on my channel, and don't oh. forget to subscribe to stay up to date on the newest theorist videos, but until then, this is Gaijin Goomba signing out. Signing out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, it's so educational and knowledgeable. I hope that you find this video interesting and enjoyable to watch and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much. If you do like this video, please remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel and comment down below if you have anything to us. Thank you so much and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye! But hey, that's just a game. A GAME EXCHANGE! Call shock. Thanks for watching. Thank you. And subscribe! Thank you.